Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Thursday and today's guest, including Farhan, standing by from Hamilton, brought to you by Optic Foliar, the only lights on spray with no damage and no burning to your plant leaves, plant efficiency, nutrition, and results all combined into a single solution for all stages of growth and safe to use on flowers. Spray it, see it, believe it. That's Optic Foliar. Visit this made in BC uh, company online at opticfoliar.ca. Just before we get to... Uh, Farhan, a note here. Uh, as he just said, Jim Rutherford, we found out uh, this news from Darren Dreger on Twitter uh, just before the show. Our poll question was, are you in favor of uh, Quinn Hughes killing penalties? Uh, 600 votes or so, 86% saying yes. We're going to take a left turn here and change our poll question. We'll get to it in the uh, next segment. It has to do with, well, it'll, it'll be, are you in favor of Jim Rutherford joining the Canucks uh, front office? Because it looks like it's going to happen. We go to Hamilton now, site of Sunday's Grey Cup between the Thai Cats and Bombers and Farhan Lalji. How are you, sir? I'm good, boys. Always love hanging out in the hammer. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about the game in, in a second, but Farhan, we got hit with this news just before mm -hmm. uh, we went to air. Just your reaction to uh, Jim Rutherford reportedly joining the Canucks front office. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I thought they'd probably take a little more time. Um, you know, before going in this direction. And, uh, you know, I was kind of excited to see what the, you know, the five-person conglomerate was going to be able to come up with in the short term and, you know, and, and the people that they were going to look at. Um, you know, look, I have mixed feelings, right? I I, um, I generally like young, up-and-coming and dynamic mm -hmm. versus old, been there, done that. You know, like that may sound, you know, some people may prefer experience, and, and I think that matters. But I, you know, 73-year-old Jim Rutherford, if he comes in as a president, and hires an ex you know a, mm -hmm. a pres or hires a GM um, that is innovative and is uh, you know uh, a big thinker that does things a little differently. I, I think that'd be great, right? And and I you know when you look at a guy like Brian Burke who takes the job in uh, you know in Pittsburgh and and you know like Brian, I think he kind of knows where he's at at this stage of his career, right? And when you have those kind of people, like you know, they can they can do good things or they can put good people in place. And I think Berkey's equipped to do that. And I'm I'm hoping that Rutherford is the same. If in fact this does get done, um, because I, I just would like to see some freshness in the GM role. The guy that's doing the day to day grind, I, I you know I I'm not sure I'd be thrilled if it was Jim Rutherford. But uh, you know, is there a place for him in the organization if if he were to bring in the right people and and be charged with that task? Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say no. I want to see it play out, but I, I do get nervous, to be quite honest, when I, when I see an old hockey guy come into this kind of thing. Are you saying that older people uh, can't be uh, uh, can't be innovative? Um, I think older people need to bring people in with them that are innovative. Like you know what I mean? Like, do I think Jim Rutherford can create that kind of an organization? Like, can he be the front per person for that kind of an organization? I, like, I just don't think he can do the day-to-day -day the way it's being done today, right? It's being done differently by the successful organizations. They, you know, whether it's buying into the analytics, whether it's, just, you know, creating uh, an organization with a lot of different roles that doesn't have, you know, completely centralized power with one person doing everything, you know, that's not what I want to see. I, I want to see some new thinking. I want to see additional voices, uh, you know, and I just, I, I want to see it going in a different direction, quite frankly, than what we've seen with, Jim Benning being the only guy at the, at the wheel for the last yeah. five years, right? Like, that's not been good. So, I yeah. uh, like I said, if you, if you bring in Jim Rutherford, great. Like, I, I'm willing to listen if he's the president. I'd be real nervous if he's the GM. Um, I, I don't know if you are traveling uh, last night, Farhan, or not. You're in Hamilton right now for people just uh, uh, tuning in. But uh, what are you seeing after two games that are Bruce Boudreaux? I'm seeing what you'd kind of expect, right? Like, you're seeing a team that is, is happy to be able to make a new first impression. Right. And just playing with a new level of energy as opposed to just being down. Right. And, you know, their body language was awful previously. And, you know, you could tell, like, Stan Smith was right. Like, I mean, you know, something needed to happen. Guys needed to change. And, you know, the GM change wouldn't have affected them as directly. So now, you know, they've done this. I think, um, I think the one priority that Boudreaux has had is try to make it fun and just try to alleviate pressure. 
because the previous, um, you know, when they were losing and, and when Travis was there, it was the same thing. And you know me, like I'm a fan of Travis. So I don't, I don't want to believe Travis was the problem. I think he's a good coach. That said, even if he's a good coach, that doesn't mean that it wasn't time for a change. So I just think that the one thing Boudreaux has done is, is just try to lighten the room up a little bit and try to uh, just make it a more fun atmosphere. And I think he's succeeding in that. And, um, you know, you're just seeing guys that are being put in some slightly different roles and just having an opportunity to make a new impression. Uh, you know, do I think Quinn Hughes is a long-term penalty killer in this league? I'm not sure, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I think physically that's going to be a challenge for him. I don't want to see him blocking shots. I just don't, man. Yep. Like, he's too valuable for the Canucks when he's in the lineup. I don't want to see him blocking a ton of shots. So do I think he's a long-term solution there? No, but at the same time, they don't have a lot of solutions right now. And you'd like for him to be able to chip in in a small role on the PK if needed at any given time, right? Like, as opposed to being that mainstay that's going to play more than 50% of every PK. I don't want to see that, but I, I don't want it to be I, – I think, I think even Hughes himself just likes knowing that he's an option likes knowing that he's not labeled as somebody who can't do it, right? So I think when you show some confidence, that's good for the player. All right, let's talk uh, big football game. Great Cup, Sunday, Winnipeg-Hamilton. Uh, Ty Cat's going to go with Dane Evans at QB because of what he did in the Eastern Final. And Jeremiah Masoli is going to you know, start uh, this game farhand on, on the bench watching. Uh, your thoughts on the matchup and uh, the Ty Cats playing at home? Well, as far as Dane Evans is concerned, I think it's the right decision, right? You can't go 16 to 16 and play the way he did in the East Semi and then all of a sudden not start him. I think what was more interesting was that they didn't do the coaches' gamesmanship thing, right? You know, the typical football coaches, you know, everything's a military secret. We want our opponents to prepare for everybody, and we want to make it harder for them. You know, he didn't do that. He just said, nope, we're starting Dane. We're going to get that out of the way right now. We want the quarterbacks to have that clarity. We want everybody to have that clarity, and, and that was good. I, I appreciate it. Orlando Steinauer for doing that, right, and not playing games. Um, you know, and, and I think he's got a lot to prove because I think Dane Evans had a very good season last year and really laid an egg in the Great Cup, right? So I, I think there's a lot there. Now, I think that Hamilton, I, will the crowd make a difference? Yeah, I think it will. But will it make enough of a difference? Because when I look at this, you know, you know, we've talked about this before, Rick, like you, you go to these big games and you, you know, you've got your favorite when the week starts. And in this case for me, it's Winnipeg. And you spend the entire week conjuring up ideas in your head and storylines and matchups that make you think maybe it could go Hamilton. And then by the time you get to Sunday morning, you're back on Winnipeg. And I kind of feel like I'm going through that right now. You know, I'm looking at guys like Garrett Davis and Don Jackson as potential, you know, game changers or just, you know, big wild cards that they can't other, they they can really have a presence in this game. And, you know, they're better than what uh, Winnipeg has faced at this point. But, you know, at the end of it all, here's what I can't get past. I can't get past the matchup of Winnipeg's D-line and Hamilton's O-line. Like, I think on the other side, as good as Winnipeg's O-line is, I think Hamilton's got a really good defensive line, and they can hold their own. But on the other side, Hamilton's offensive line, Winnipeg's defensive line, that's just not going to be a good matchup for Hamilton. And I don't think the crowd, Dane Evans and Don Jackson and Garrett Davis and anybody can change that. You know, I, I just I see Dane Evans running for his life a lot because he's having to throw a lot. And... These guys are getting pressure. So that's the one thing I can't get past, which is why I'm still picking Winnipeg. But, you know, the crowd, motivation, revenge from last year, all those other things, I think I think those are real, and you'll get Hamilton's best effort. Is Hamilton going to do a good job of hosting the Cup, Fran? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they will. I mean, given whatever COVID restrictions and limitations there are, right? I mean, from the stadium where you can't put as many people in there on game mm. day to, to uh, just, you know, the festival, right? Like a lot of that stuff is limited. All the team parties and everything like that, a lot of that's limited. I know they're doing Spirit of Edmonton, but that might be the extent of it. So it's, it's not going to be the same. And they're getting the game back here in a couple of years, so that's good. They'll get to do it right at that point. But I think, you know, I saw Bob Young last night at the, at the media event and talked to a bunch of people from the organizing committee, and, and they're excited. You know, I think they're going to they're gonna squeeze everything they can out of this opportunity for sure. Fran, thanks for this. Have a good time in the hammer. I will. You know, the only downside is Grey Cup is a lot better when Rick Dollywall's attending. Well, you better I know. Believe it. You better I believe found it. that out firsthand in Calgary. Yeah. You better it's believe much it. much better when Rick's here. Yep. Yeah. No Ricky show this uh, weekend, my friend. No Ricky show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tip a crown for you, my friend. Uh, you There's see, a couple of other beauties there, Farhan. I think you'll be okay. Oh, yeah. We know who they are. <laughs> Thanks, Farhan. <laughs> see you guys. Okay, you bet.